it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Your boy's back in Adam did it again. Today I received a couple of questions that are really good for HTML email developers. So I'm gonna break it down into multiple videos. Okay. So one of the questions is as a freelancer, do you add the cost of limits testing to the final price? Okay, so he's talking about HTML emails, right? So he's a HTML email developer or an aspiring HTML email developer and he's just starting right he, now he wants to start getting clients online and he wants to start making that bread that money that moolah that cash that yash okay so uh, <laughs> that's what I do that's what I specialize in okay <laughs> uh, I'm the bakers man you get what I'm saying so let's say you have five clients right for the month of July okay and you're charging let's say $200 per HTML email okay you're charging $200 per HTML email now it will be ridiculous if you come in and you say I'm gonna charge every single person $200 so let's say limits is uh, 150 and let's say Adobe Creative Suite is $50 per month right I'm just averaging that out right so that's $200 so if you was to be like well uh, you know what guys I'm doing this for $200 but if you want testing and this, this and that, right? Or you want me to edit some of the images? Well, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to charge an extra two hundred dollars because I pay two hundred dollars for, <laughs> for uh, the testing and in the software, etc. Right? Like it will be crazy for you to charge every single client an extra two hundred dollars, even though there's people, there's dirty ass developers out there that will do this, right? They'll be like, well, that's how much we're paying per month, and we add that to the price. You know, and that's what happens why people don't come back and be like, well, you know, this guy's not charging me that. This other guy over here is charging me the 200 only, right? So you don't want to lose a client. You don't want to lose somebody that you can have a long-term relationship just to make an extra $200 one time. It's better for you to make $200 every single week, right, from this person instead of use. Hey, I got it one time and this person never called me back. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to say, okay, cool. If I have five people for this month, this is my first month as a freelancer, right? Um, I got five people and they all uh, pay me $200 per month, um, not per month or $200 per project. Right. And let's say you come in and you say, okay, I got this, this people, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it in the chin, right? And actually say, you know what? I'm going to use that as a business expense. So meaning, yes, a thousand dollars is coming in, but $200 is a business expense. Okay. Now, some people might say, you know what, what I would do is I would divide how many clients I have and then I will uh, charge them and say, okay, $200 divided by five and then whatever number comes out, that's what I'm going to add extra on top of my $200. You could also do that. Um, but me personally, I think the best way is to keep it, uh, really affordable for people and also to depending on the company too, because sometimes like, let's say you might get a contract online, right? And let's say, uh, you're working for, uh, for example, I don't know, complex magazine, right? To do their HTML emails for the month, right? Uh, you can come in and say, you know what? I'm going to charge them. Uh, an extra two hundred dollars for the month, okay, or two hundred dollars for the project, or for however long it is, right? You can do it like that. But when you're freelancing on Fiverr, when you're freelancing on Craigslist, you're freelancing on uh, you know uh, Upwork, wherever the hell you at, right? You don't want to be charging two hundred dollars for every single project just because that's how much you pay per month one time. You get what I'm saying? Like you can never be so greedy. And some people they're they're super greedy, you know. And and once again, it also too it depends on the situation. Cause like let's say right now, if uh, Apple comes in and tells me, hey man, uh, we want you to do our HTML emails, you know, I know that's a huge company, right? So then now I can actually say, you know what, I'm gonna charge them the extra two hundred dollars. Not per project, but I will charge them an extra $200 just to cover my expenses that one time because I know they got it. You get what I'm saying? Now, somebody that you found on, on Fiverr, 
you know, it's probably a small business, somebody coming up, right? It's better to get them to to buy into your service uh, every single week or two to three times a week instead of saying, this guy is hitting me over the head, right? This guy is hitting me over the head and he I'm only going to do it this one time because he's too expensive. He's charging me too much. It's also uh, very good to just keep that relationship there, man. You know, I still have like clients that hit me up randomly, you know, and even now, like, you know, I'm making, you know, over $20,000 a month, right? But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not too big to be like, well, uh, you know, somebody wants me to do something, something for $200. I'm, I'm not going to be like, well, I'm not going to do it for $200. You got $200? Let me do your HTML emails. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got $400? You want me to do something? A landing page for you? Yeah, I'll take it, right? I'm not going to say no. I'm, I'm all about the bread. You know what I'm saying? So I'm that guy. And that's why people constantly come back. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. As long as you understand that, hey, I got other stuff that's happening. And if you give me some time, I'll get it done for you at that price that uh, I used to do it for you. Right. So I'm that type of person, man. I'm all about the bread. OK, <laughs> I'm never too big to to take back, you know, a, a little two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. You know, when somebody hits me up, a, a old client be like, Joe, uh, you remember this website that we did in, in 2014? Uh, can you go in there and uh, fix a couple of the menus, change the, the prices for for my restaurant, etc.? I'll go in there. You got 200 bucks. Cool. I'll go in there. I'll fix a couple of things and, you know, keep it moving. I'm not too big to to say no to money. You know what I'm saying? And I'm that type of person. So if you are like that too, like, yo, the best thing to do is just to keep that client there because they're always going to come back. They're always going to come back. Nobody wants to be finding a new developer, giving all the information, giving all, 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 all the things that, you know, project info, like, once you know a company, once you, you have that relationship, that you could always come back and work with them, okay? But if you're constantly trying to squeeze money out of people, then it's going to be a no-go, okay? People are only going to come back to you on one time, and then they will never come back. They'll be like, okay, that's it. This is not for me. I could find somebody cheaper, right? Um, and that's just how it is. Okay. Now, of course, I'm not saying to do HTML emails at $200. It's whatever price you want to get, right? You can come in and say, yo, I, I only do it for 500. I only do it for a thousand. I only do it for 2000. Whatever you're, you, you know, you can do and, and you can say, Hey, this is how much I want to charge. Do it. But just take into consideration who is it that you're charging that amount of money. Okay. It's big difference between uh, a small business who's starting up right? Or somebody who just opened up a little Shopify store online and wants to get some HTML emails than a corporation, right? If you got Macy's.com hiring you, you're not going to charge Macy's the same price that you're going to charge little Billy who just started his, his, uh, you know, Shopify website for PlayStation five controllers. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's a big difference. So you got to know your, your, um, your client, right. And, and understand how it works. Now, like I said, it's always good to have a, a, a business set up, a LLC, a escort. So then all of those things that you pay for is actually a business expense. So you can come in and say, you know what, I'm going to take this, this, uh, this hate, right. I'm going to take this hate, right. The first month, let's say you only made a thousand dollars. Right. You only made a thousand dollars and you say, I'm going to take this hit to buy this software, the testing software, test, uh, get the Photoshop and uh, Premiere Pro, whatever, Adobe Creative Suite. Right. Two hundred dollars. So then that two hundred dollars is a business expense. That means that at the end of the year, even though a thousand dollars came in, now you only pay for taxes for those eight hundred dollars instead of paying the thousand dollars. You get what I'm saying? So it, it actually evens out. You know, I do that all the time with my business. I have a lot of services that that I use and everything is a business expense, right? It could be my phone. It could be uh, the Internet. It could be uh, all of those things that you need. Those are business expenses. OK, so you don't have to pay taxes on that. Okay. So yeah, man, definitely. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to code HTML emails, right? Go to codingphase.com guys It's a really great opportunity for you guys who are getting your foot in the door as a developer. Okay. 
uh, let's be honest, it's going to take you some time to master everything. And in reality, you shouldn't be at home just learning to code without making some money, right? If you're looking to make money and you want to make money online from home, you want to do freelance, you want to be able to say, hey, I want to work part-time. There's a lot of part-times uh, for uh, HTML email developers, which means that, hey, you could work two jobs if you want to. You can say, hey, I'm going to do uh, my own projects and then work part-time on, on a digital agency, et cetera, right? It's up to you how you want to do it. But like what I'm saying is, you don't have to master web development completely before getting a job. You can come in and start working with the, the tools that you already have in the beginning. HTML, CSS, maybe some basic JavaScript. And that's saying you could find a job. There's bread out here to be made. And, you know, you got to get that, bro. So stop slacking. Okay. Once again, if you guys want to go check out codingface.com, uh, pretty much it's $20 per month just to get you started. It's, you get access to all of my courses. If you want to be part of our ASAP developer group. Okay. And at the same time, uh, get exclusive content within the ASAP developers group. And, and you feel like, hey, you want joe to be more hands-on with you and, and be able to help you out and give you some tips directly right uh the best thing to do is to actually sign up for the yearly membership which saves you i believe three months so you sign up for the monthly and then you'll see something that says upgrade your account and there you go you got the whole whole yearly you know three months free okay so in reality it's actually pretty damn good all right so i'm gonna see you guys later it's your boy joe back at it again codingface.com your boy's back and i done did it again peace guys